Lisa's painting parties. It is Wednesday night um, and we are going to be painting a uh, candy cane reindeer painting. Um, it was voted last week with 47% of the popular vote. So that's the one we're going to be recreating today and making it our own. So we're going to get started a little bit after six. <clears throat> and uh, so if you want to grab your canvas and your paints and water and uh, everything you need so we can get started and then we can uh, I'll start talking you guys through how to um, go about recreating it so I'm really excited to have you guys join me today as you guys come on feel free to let me know that you've joined and like where you're tuning in from um, it, we woke up today to uh, a lot of snow out here in Ajax so I was not expecting that granted I didn't like look at the weather before so <laughs> I'm sure it was already forecasted but um, it was a very wintry day, so I'm really in the mood to do like a Christmassy kind of holiday painting. So this will be really fun to do. Um, so um, what I have in terms of supplies, um, I have a canvas board. I always use um, an 11 by 14 uh, size canvas board for these sessions. I find I like the size of them, um, and I like how uh, thin and easy they are to for storage, and the quality is still quite good to hold acrylic or watercolor, whatever you so desire. I use acrylic paint. Um, and so in terms of paint colors, as per usual, I always recommend having your basic primary colors. So having red, yellow, and blue, because you can make any colors with these ones, um, and also having white and black. I would suggest um, for this painting as well, I do have a pre-mixed brown, so I'm going to be using that as well. So if you have a pre-mixed brown, I would consider doing that as well for the reindeer. Um, as I find it difficult to get a nice brown mixing uh, the primaries and whatnot together. So I, I'm gonna, I would suggest having that too. Um, but those are the ones we're going to be using. I also have a water container ready to go. I should have two. This is backup. And then I say three sizes of brush. A larger brush for full coverage so we can do the background and get a lot of coverage going. A medium sized brush for those medium sized areas and a fine brush. And I just say medium, large, medium and fine because it's really in relation to whatever canvas you're using. So I'm using this 11 by 14, so that's the relation I'm going with with that. If you're doing a much larger canvas, you'll need larger brushes and so forth, right? I also have paper towel ready to go in my palette. I haven't put any paint down yet because uh, the paint, acrylic paint dries very quickly. So I would strongly suggest not putting it down right away. We'll wait until we get going. Uh, I'm just getting my iPad charged up. I think it has enough for us to go. So I have the image ready to go, so I'll have it available. I did snap a picture of it from my computer so it looks a little bit funky. So what I always suggest is um, you having your own like the actual picture available for yourself either on like a smartphone or some other device that you're not using so you can refer to it as we go in case I go too quickly or too slowly or if you just want more reference if you're just looking at something more specific. Um, but I will have it, this is the image that we're going to be recreating. And again like in all the paint parties the images that I grab and you guys vote on every week um, are ones that I just really like from Google. Sometimes they're photos, sometimes they're people's art, sometimes it's random things like that. And then I just walk you through how I would recreate this painting. So this is my first time painting it as well. Um, and um, if you have any ways, things that you want to share, if you're trying a different technique, and that's why I always encourage you to make it your own. I really want art to be really accessible to everyone. Everyone, anyone can do it. It's super fun. And that's what we're going to be doing. So I'm going to have this here. For reference and then I'll move the camera angle a little bit once we get started too. Awesome we have Ange in California 72 degrees yeah very nice nice weather there for sure. Uh, Ruth from Puerto Rico warm yeah you, you were here last time too Ruth fantastic that's great and you had nice weather last week as well lucky you. And Iman's here from Long Island fantastic hello. Yeah so um so far um we usually get some uh interesting uh links pop up uh, for the paint party so if you guys see anything like that do not click on them this is the paint party don't give your personal information i don't collect money for this this is a free paint party um, if you are looking to support me in any way i have some of my art available on the site um, and i also uh, will do any like in person not in person not right now because of COVID. but if you want to do like virtual parties or if you would like me to host something like that i'm more than willing to do it but i don't ask for anything for these sessions so don't give your money to anyone <laughs> Don't give personal information. Don't click on any links. And if you see them pop up, please report them or let other people who might join know not to click them. Because uh, sometimes I get into it and then I just don't want people to be uh, to be scammed. 
All right, and I have a nice coffee as well. So that's where my drink of choice is, even though it's 6 p.m. on a Wednesday, but <laughs> that's the one I go with, and also my water too. So I would suggest that as well. Hi, Patty. Hi, Susan. I'm guessing Susan might be there too. Glad you guys are joining again. Fantastic. All right, cool. So it's just approaching six o'clock, so we'll get started shortly. Um, all my previous paint parties are also all free and they're all available on the Facebook site. This is number 43, I think. Um, so we've been doing this for uh, <laughs> 43 weeks, I guess. It's crazy. Um, so there's many, many other videos on the um, on the Facebook site. I also have them on my YouTube channel, Lisa's Painting Party, so you can go there as well, whatever format you prefer. It's still these live events. It's nothing fancier in terms of camera work. It's literally just me in my room doing this. So <laughs> I apologize for um, the technical quality not being as good as it could be. Um, but yeah, we have fun though, which is nice. Hi, Mark from Leamington. Awesome. I'm so glad you're joining. That's fantastic. Another fellow Ontarian. Cool. So we're going to get started. Um, cool. So if you want to start off on putting a, a background of black on the canvas, you can get started with that uh, while we wait just for some more people to join um, if they so desire to. Um, I'm going to get started probably in about two, three minutes or so. So if you want to get started on putting a nice um, black layer of paint on your canvas, if that's what you're choosing to do, again, this is the inspiration image. You can do any color you want. You can keep it white if you want. Um, but if you want to get it all covered in black, I would suggest wetting down the ca canvas slightly with water, um, but very lightly. Don't let it be dripping. Just have it kind of like damp to the touch and then get your black paint on top. So you can start that if you'd like to. I'll be doing that in a little bit. Oh, hi, Susan. I'm so glad. Yay. All right, so we'll... Okay, I think this works okay. Might move it a little bit. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. It's not really gonna zoom in much more than that. But that works. Okay, cool. So yeah, so I think maybe I will just start doing the background, the black part of the canvas. What I'm thinking is um, the things that I want to change up on this for myself. I do think I want to stick with a nice dark background. Um, so I do like the black. I think with the snowflakes that are in the background, I might want to make some of them look a little bit more unique, like have a little like starry snowflake kind of look to them. Um, so I think I want to play with that a bit. And I do want to make the ornaments different colors. So those are the few of the things that I want to change up on it. Um, and if there's anything that you're interested in changing up in it, think about how you want to do it. And if you want to let us know what you're thinking about it, um, feel free. And then we can always like troubleshoot. Some people like to ask for color recommendations or whatnot. Can you draw the space for the face first? Yeah, if you want to, you definitely can. Um, for me, I'm, I'm going to just start doing the entire canvas, um, do the whole background. And then I'm going to put in the face afterwards. But if that gives you a good reference as to where you want it to go, you can grab a pencil and you can do that first. So that's, yeah, absolutely. Whatever works for you. Okay, so I'm going to start with just wetting down the canvas a bit. So I just have water on my brush. And I'm just going to start putting water on the canvas. And it really doesn't matter how you get it there. Just trying to get it all fully covered. The reason I do this is because... It will make it easier to spread the paint all across the canvas, but if you make it too wet, it will lose the opacity of the black paint, and that's not so great. So you wanna just make sure that it's a nice thin layer of water. And if you end up putting too much on it, again, don't fret. You can get your paper towel and just like dab it, and then you can uh, remove the excess water, which I might end up doing a bit depending on how much water goes on here. We'll see, we'll see, we'll play with it. Kind of toying with the idea of maybe adding like some dark blue or dark purple into the background as well, like not just having it pure black. So I'm not sure yet. I'm gonna let it speak to me as I <laughs> as I start. If that's something that you're interested in, you can do it too. So yeah, so I'm just gonna go like that and just dab some of the water. Okay, 
So now I'm going to start with my paint. And my paint is always from the Dollarama dollar store paint. I don't use fancy paint. I don't, uh, I'm sure, it, I'm sure there's a lot of better qualities out there, but, um, again, anyone can paint. You can use anything you have to get some really great, beautiful paintings going. If you don't, don't let cheap paint stop you from painting. Okay. So I'm just going to start getting the black on here. And when I'm doing this back coat, I might need, I might need two layers. I'm not exactly sure. We'll see how, we'll see how the paint goes on and you might need two layers, but let's do one nice thin layer of black first, um, so that it dries quickly. And then we can always put another layer on, on top of it, if we want it to be a little bit darker. But if you're, if you're making it really thick, then it is going to take longer for it to dry. Also, if you're already using, some people have canvas that's already black, like that comes pre-primed in black from the store, that works out fine too. So you can just relax and wait for us until we get there. I'm also making sure that I'm painting the sides of my canvas as I'm going, because you, when you hang up or when you, well, this one I wouldn't really hang up because it is like a flat piece, but sometimes I do put them like up against things. It just looks nicer, more finished if the sides of the canvas are also painted. So I would suggest doing that too, as you go, especially with this one, because there's nothing else that's really going to be going off the corners of the canvas. So just... I've never already run out of black paint on my palette. I got more black paint on there. Yeah, Mary says she's always used Dollarama paints and canvases, and she never had any issues, and they work just fine. That's me too. Me too. I know when I was um, when I was in high school, I remember going with my mom to the art store. Cause I wanted, you know, to be an artist and I had to get all like the nicest things. And when I had kind of like a sticker shock <laughs> when I saw how much things cost and I was like, uh, how much is this going to cost? Like three bottles of paint is going to be like $50 or something. I'm like, I, I can't do this. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I, I remember picking very carefully the colors I wanted and, and being very precise. And then I remember thinking like, oh, I, I can't. And I always felt so weird about using them too. I have I have a weird complex about when something is really expensive or I don't want to like waste it. I don't want it to run out quickly. So it was it was just a bad experience overall. So I'm like, okay, you know what? So I tried the like the cheap dollar amateur ones. They still worked very well, but I wanted them to use for. And I don't feel bad about using them up. <laughs> Just like I see a lot of um, people do like acrylic pours, like that's like a really uh, popular thing now where you put a bunch of acrylic paint in like a cup and then you like pour it and you, there's different ways they do it and it looks super cool. Like the videos are awesome. I just can't, I can't do it. <laughs> I can't like put that much paint and waste that much paint on, on something and then like have the paint dripping off. Like it, it almost like gives me anxiety about it. Like I'm just like, oh, I, I just, I, I can't. I have obviously I have issues about like, wasting <laughs> like yeah I just uh, I love watching people do it I just uh, yeah, can't do it okay is that good coverage overall as it dries I'm going to start to notice um, if there's any uh, spots like white spots from the canvas that are still kind of showing through. Um, I also, when I did this, I kind of made my strokes in all different directions um, just to kind of give it a more coverage, really, hopefully. I didn't really want to go one way or another. Um, and I do want to paint the bottom part, too, which I know I put it right back down again, but I do this and I still put it down and I still find it works well enough. Size on 
this side. Okay. Oh, Sabrina's asking what brushes do I use? So the brushes that I have, um, this one is, um, it's a really like thick bristled brush. Um, I've had it for a very long time. Um, these ones I think we did get from like an art store a long time ago. Um, someone had said before that, which again, I'm not like a professional <laughs> in any capacity, um, but um, they had said that the thicker bristles are more for oil-based paints. Um, Cause I do have other ones that are very soft um, so I use, uh, yeah, so I use, I use this one here. It's called Eterna Pure Bristle and it's a number 10 and it's like a flat. I think it's called a filbert, I think. Um, and then I have some other ones. I also have, um, quite a few that are from the dollar store too. I have, I got a really nice set actually. It's like these really nice clear ones with like different color ends to them. And they had a bunch of them at the dollar store too and a bunch of different sizes. They're really soft and they're great. Um, so I love those. And I also got a bunch of fine tip pens no fine tip brushes uh from amazon there's like a 12 pack and they have it's really great because they have like um where you can hold it like almost like a pencil or a pen um so it, it sits really nicely so when you're trying to really find lines it really helps you keep your steadiness of your hand um and there is like a, a bunch of them this one i think is a number one i think the number already rubbed off um or maybe it's number two but there was like 12 and there are a bunch of different sizes and i really like those from Amazon. I think they're only about like maybe 12 or 14 bucks for 12 of them. Again, pretty cheap, <laughs> but pretty good. Okay, so I'm just grabbing some, I don't think the purple is really going to show up too much, but I'm just going to add a little bit. I want to see if anything comes up. Not really. You can't really tell. The black still overpowers it. I wanted to see if I could add like a little bit of like purple into it, but black's overpowering it quite significantly. Still gonna finish off what I put there, but it's all just blending into the black. I'm just covering off right now some of the spots on the canvas. I'm gonna go back to my black now. Um, and um, just to make sure it's nice and opaque, because I want it to I don't want to see the, the white canvas behind it. So, yeah. so as, like I said, as it dries, you'll start to see little spots that you may want to touch up a bit. And again, I'm just going back and forth kind of in a couple, you know, just like sweeping it, kind of little X's, like little swoops. So if you do notice the, the paint brush strokes and it looks a bit random and I kind of like that look more if you do notice the, the brush strokes in a background, like it looks, I don't like things super uniform. Okay, I think that's better. Right now it's a little bit of a waiting game until we get that dry before we start putting anything else on top of this. I'm just washing off my brush now. So if you're, whatever brushes you're using, whether they're really expensive, whether they're really cheap, it's really important to ensure that you're getting all the acrylic paint off of your brushes. Um, keeping the acrylic paint on there and letting it dry is a surefire way, way to destroy your brushes, regardless which ones you're using. Um, acrylic paint is water, like water is a water-based paint, but um, it does dry permanent. So if you do get it on your clothes, again, it's better if you're wearing kind of like, you know, clothes you don't really care about getting dirty, um, just in case, um, or wear like a smock or something because. Um, if it does get in your clothes and dry, you need you need to get it out as quickly as possible. Because once it dries, it's it's your friend forever. Stick around. You made a friend. The same thing happens with the bristles. Like if it dries in the bristles, then it just ruins them. 
makes them really hard and crappy. Oh, nice, Tracy. You just got those. That's fantastic. The really fine ones, I'm guessing, ones from Amazon. I love those. Like, that was where I felt I was missing a lot of in my um, paintbrush assortment was I was I didn't have anything that I was really happy with and using, like, a fine point. And, yeah, they are they're great. I really like them. And Sabrina says she uses Princeton brushes, but sometimes struggles with covering 11 by 14 mixed media pad. Yeah, um, I'm not, I have to look those up. I'm not exactly sure. I know, like, I find, like, this one's really great. Like, it's it's nice and wide. Um, I, I love this one. And I have another one that's similar, but it's definitely been used a bit more. I've had it for a lot longer. It's a bit lower. It's, a, it's like a lower one. I do also prefer brushes that are, like, closer to the like that aren't very long so there's some brushes that are very like you can tell like this one here like it's very long um or like this one and i find it really hard to control when there's like a lot of bristle at the end so i prefer ones that are like closer to the actual like handle um and i feel like I, all the ones i use predominantly are like that <laughs> so that's what i like i like having the control i don't like having uh, the longer ones that I, I don't know that's not that's not my thing that's another thing that I tend I didn't really notice I did that a lot but that's always the ones I pick whenever I'm painting okay so if we're looking at our inspiration image um there's a few things to look for so obviously we have our background we won't we're not going to put our snowflakes in until later that will be like afterwards um but his little like hoops are right on this ledge so we're going to put in a little bit of a ledge that'll be the next thing that we do so we're going to get some white paint we might be able to even do it now while it's still wet because we want it to be a bit of a gray so that could work um so i might do that in a moment once we put in that ledge then we'll start building out our reindeer to see where his head is going to live and that'll be the next step after we do that ledge so yeah so let's do that i'm going to get some white paint on my palette And am I going to use my biggest brush or my medium one? Um, I think I'm going to use my big one. Yes, I am. So these brushes are also very long. The handle's very long. And where everything I use and where I'm recording on, it always hits the stuff, too. It's kind of funny. Okay. So I'm just going to put in just a line at the bottom here. So again, like I said, my paint was still a little bit wet. So as I put white paint right on top of it in pretty straight line, I'm getting, it's turning gray, which is exactly what I want. And if you are able to put it up on something like this, like this is just like a step stool, like this is even an easel. <laughs> but if you're able to put it on something, this is helping me make a really straight line as well at the bottom. So I would suggest that too. As you can see, I'm just running my brush across the bottom and it's creating a nice ledge, it's turning more white as I speak, as I add more white to it. So let's get it darker again. Get a bit more black on top of there. I don't want it to be super white. That's nice. That, that's kind of where we want it to be. If you have like a ruler or something too, or like if you wanted to do that, that could work as well. I'm not going to worry too much about making it super straight. I just wanted it to be predominantly right at that bottom area there. So if it has a little bit of a groove to it, I'm okay with it too. Yes, anyone uh, can see it. it's very shiny. 
but you can kind of see I have a little slight ledge there. I'm just going to put like a little like white accents on here. I think I'm digging that a bit more. I know I'll go back and forth being like, oh, it's too white. Oh, it's too gray. <laughs> it's almost like there's like some snow or on this ledge. that out again. Hi Wilma! Hi Lori! Oh I'm glad you guys will be uh, watching it later. That's fantastic. Definitely share your pictures. I love to see them. So like I said anyone who might be tuning in or who doesn't have their paints ready if this is something that you would like to try, the video will be available on uh, under the videos tab on my Facebook page, and it'll be up, like ongoing. Um, or you can also catch it on my YouTube channel, Lisa's Painting Parties, and it'll be out probably about like two hours or so after the paint party is done. So, yeah. so you have different ways you can definitely check it out. But I definitely would love to see it. So please share your pictures um, when you're done, because I love to see what everyone's done, how you manage your own. Everyone does their own like individual take on it, which is always fun to see. Okay, starting to, to dry. So basically I'm just kind of waiting until um, the black paint has dried. It's getting there. And I think we're almost at the point where even, for me anyways, it's, it's I think we can probably start sketching in where we want the guy to be without it affecting our, our line color too much. So I think for this, um, Yeah, I'm just going to use my white to put in my reindeer guy. And I'm going to use my medium, one of my medium brushes, I think, to play that out. Okay, so if we look at the shape of the reindeer, pretty much the, this part here, we're looking at kind of like a circle. So you could use a guide if you had a shape that kind of looks like the size you would want, you can kind of use that and like circle and use that as a, a stencil if you so desire. I'm going to kind of eyeball it for today. Um, and then we're going to then build the head from there. We're going to just do like a half kind of an upside down U and then that will finish it off and then we'll just like round off the edges a little bit as we go. Whenever we paint something, um, like freehanding it, I would strongly suggest doing it, um, try it, go smaller and then build it bigger as you go. Um, again, with this, it doesn't matter too much because if you make any mistakes, you can just cover up your mistakes with black paint and it's super easy. So don't stress too much about this one. If you end up doing it and you hate it, just let it dry and then repaint over it with black because we haven't really, like this is not something complicated to cover up, right? At this point. So I'm gonna use um, white on a medium brush. And if we look at the size, his head is about, it goes about halfway up, right? So he wants to be pretty prominent, but we still need a lot of room for his reindeer, rain, reindeer reins? No. <laughs> Can't think of what it's called now. Reins, right? Anyways, top part of his, the, the candy cane reindeer things. Um, so yeah, so let's, so we're gonna basically make the head here. Okay, so, and it's gonna be centered. So we're gonna look and say, okay, and then we're gonna start. So let's start small. Okay, so I'm just doing it in white because I'm gonna be able to paint over this nicely. Okay, and this part goes all the way to the bottom of this 
ledge that we created because it's kind of peeking up over it. Finish out the circle with that bottom that part here. And then we're going to build out, am I happy with the size of that? I think I am. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, so now we're going to build out the top part here. So again, I'm going to go a little smaller than what I want first. And as you can see, I, it's becoming a little bit gray because right there is still wet, but that's okay. I'm just going to mix that up and we're going to end up doing brown on it anyways. And again, if you do the shape and you don't like it, we can always paint over it or like touch it up around the sides with black. So don't worry about it. Okay. So there we go. It kind of looks like a snowman. <laughs> I just put another one on top and just do a snowman instead. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just gonna smooth this out a little bit to make it more like it goes in from here out this way. Okay, okay. So that's where I want his head to live. If you have your brown, use that the reason why I put white first is because I use dollar store paints <laughs> That's one thing. so I find that if I give it a white base um, when I put other color on top it will stand out more on the black than just applying the color like the brown right to the paint on the black it still works okay I just find that um, this helps a little bit pop the color a bit um, so that's why I normally do it um, that's pretty much it. So I have, like I said, I do have a brown. This one's a cin it's called cinnamon brown. I didn't pick it for any particular reason. It's just the one I, I had. So that's what I'm going to be using. And I would also suggest putting some yellow as well. And using the yellow as like some of the highlight on it. So instead of using the white to lighten it up, which we're going to do it a bit anyways, um, the yellow will add some nice, um, some nice color to it. Antlers, thank you, everyone. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes the words just don't come to me, especially when I'm on camera. Oh, nice. Great. Sheila says she's going to be doing it later as well. Fantastic. That's great. Hi, Terry. I'm glad you're stopping in again. Are you painting today with us or are you just stopping in? It's so weird not to just, like, hear you guys back. <laughs> Still not used to it after over 40 paint parties. So I almost expect someone to be like, yeah, this is what I'm doing. Okay. So I'm going to get my brown and I'm just going to start filling it in. My paint is still not fully dry yet, but that's okay because I do want this guy to have a bit of, I don't care about the really what color brown I have going. I just want to start getting this on here and then I'll lighten it and darken it as we go. Okay. 
Oh, so recently I tried, I don't know if you guys have seen them, but they're like um, these like chocolate balls. They're like called hot chocolate bombs. Um, so I bought some from a local vendor. Um, and so basically it had, it's like really yummy chocolate in a ball. And then it has like hot chocolate powder inside and then marshmallows. And sometimes like different pieces of like maybe like candy cane or M&Ms or they might do other random things. I just got like the regular ones um, and um, it was so delicious. So what we did is we actually put the, so you basically put them in a mug and I um, pulled a shot of espresso on top of it and then I put steamed milk. So it was kind of like a mocha. It was so good. <laughs> I strongly, strongly recommend if you guys have seen them, like definitely, definitely try it. If you're, if you enjoy coffee, if you enjoy chocolate, so 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 good. I ended up buying a, a few of them for friends <laughs> for for Christmas. Other fellow coffee drinkers. So you'll notice, like as I'm doing it, um, I am just keeping in mind how I, I want this part to be round and that to be the prominent part. And I do that more as a reminder to me. I still want this to dry fully before I, I really start to get the colors going and, and how I want it because right now it's just continuing to pull off the, the white and the black that's already there. There we go. I'm digging that guy. I'm digging him so far. He's looking pretty good. Okay. So, um, okay, so you're going to paint your canvas black first. Yeah, that sounds good, Terry. Awesome. I can't wait to see it. And um, Lisa says she made some yesterday. That's awesome. I, I kind of want to learn how to make them because they look amazing. Um, and Patty's just asking how to make brown with the colors that we were suggested to have. So, yes, yeah, so if you want to make brown with the colors that you have, um, the short answer is you can mix um, the blue, the white, the, sorry, the blue, the yellow, and the red together, and it will mix the brown. Now, it's not, it might be a bit funky color, but we can kind of play with it. So let me do that on my palette. Let's play with it a little bit while that dries. Let's see how it looks and see how we want to get it done. Okay, so. Let's see how it compares to the one that I have from the dollar store too. Do you want to use that brush? Do you want to use actually this one? Yeah. Okay. So on my palette here, I have yellow, red, and blue. I have, that's the premix store one. So let's just mix it up and see how it goes. So I'm just going to pull some yellow into the red. So now we're having a nice orange happening. I'm going to get some blue and throw it in there. Okay. So starting to look muddy. It looks a bit gray. Again, being dollar store paints, that's where it gets a little tricky because sometimes the bases are a bit off. But you're seeing it's already, I'm pulling more yellow into it. I feel like the yellow is really what's making it become like kind of like a chestnutty color. I don't know if you guys see that okay? Yeah, there we go. So it kind of created like a chestnut. Ah, oh, chestnut's the right word. It's definitely lighter right now than the one I have there. But it's pretty nice. So it turned out pretty good. I don't know if you can see that okay. So I put like equal parts yellow and red. And then I put a bit of blue. And then I added more yellow to it. And I think you just have to play with it. But I would stick more with getting the yellow to make it happen because I think if you put more of the blue in, the blue can overpower it. And again, depending on the um, the paint, um, yeah, so we can try. We can do that. I grabbed the brown that was pre-mixed, but actually that was really easy just to mix it on my palette too. <laughs> so I did try to cheat a little bit by having the pre-mixed, but 
It's actually kind of nice. It's actually, look, that's the color I just made, which... That's nice. So that's how you can get that brown going. <laughs> it's never going to dry because I'm just going to keep touching it with more and more colors. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I hope that helped. You guys can see how that can work. And that was one of my brushes I don't like to use because it's very long. Okay, so as this is going, I think I'm going to get one of my... Do I want to go this fine right now? I'm not sure if I want to go that fine. But I want to put in where I want the ears to live and where I want the little paws, the hooves to live. And I'll see if I can use it. I like this one a bit more, I think. Okay. Um, no, I like thin brush. Okay. So let's put in, let's play with the ears. So the ears are going to come from, so basically you've got the, the middle here. So they're going to come just from the side and they're going to come out in kind of like a a nice big loop, wave, wave. hand right in the wet paint. That's not the first time and it won't be the last time. Okay, so I'm just touching up some of the lines here. I'm just thickening it up a little bit because it's a nice brown color on here and I'm using actually the brown I just made because I think that works nicely for this part here okay and let's do the same thing on the other side and again they don't have to be the same they don't have to look perfect because ears can look different they can be in different shapes and directions I don't know the shapes, I guess they look kind of similar, but so don't worry if it's not exactly exactly. Let's try to put it more or less. I'm gonna go up and down and then a little loopy, little flip up. And bring it in. I'm using my thin brush just to outline and to thicken it up as I'm going. Cool. This is a little thin I think. I'm going to thicken that up a little bit. There we go. Awesome. This one actually even comes down a little bit more, so let's bring that down a little more. Cool. Okay, so in here, it's a little bit lighter, so I'm going to just get, I just grabbed some yellow. And I'm just filling in this middle part with yellow, but I didn't clean my brush. So there's still brown on the brush 
and it's kind of dirtying up my yellow a bit, which is what I want. So I don't want it to be like a super bright yellow. Sorry, when I'm trying to be more detailed, I don't talk as much. <laughs> so I'm just basically putting the yellow, and then my brush still has some of the brown paint on it. And then if it doesn't, I'm just getting a little bit of brown, just like mixing it onto this. Here, just to get the inside of the ears, this color. So I'm just like mixing like wet on wet paint and just playing a little bit with adding the yellow and then going and making it a little darker and just playing a little bit with the colors until I get the way I like it. And it has kind of like a stifle effect. So I'm just going to go back in and just like take away my smooth lines and just like and just do this. Just dab my brush to give it a little bit of like texture. Here. Okay. Okay. Just going back to get a little bit of black because I want to just darken it up a little bit. Here. Oh, this is. Oh, that's strange. I don't think I'm seeing all the comments. Okay, sorry about that. I don't know. I think there's. You know, it's not bringing them up all the whole time. Cool. Thanks, Laura. Transferring to Patty, too. That's fantastic. Hi, Michael. Thanks for joining again. Hi, Deborah. When can we do this strap? This strap. This is actually my original painting. <laughs> so I don't know. We can we can try it. I don't know how I'm gonna talk through it to be honest. Because when I did it, it was kind of just like random <laughs> when I did it. But um, we we can we can try it one one time. Maybe we can do a, a session for anyone who's interested in trying to trying to do a crazy colorful giraffe. I do have that one. Um, that one I did a while ago, actually. I did also an elephant as well with that kind of color scheme. I don't like as much how it turned out. I did a tiger as well. But the draft was my favorite. I thought it turned out really nice. 
yeah, maybe we'll do like a special session just for it. <laughs> we'll see, and I'll try to talk you guys through that one. It was definitely fun, but it was it was definitely one of those where, for many parts of it, I felt like um, it did not look good at all. <laughs> <laughs> like as I was doing it, like color and having to put more colors, I was questioning the process the entire time. But I'll definitely be down to try to like talk you guys through it if you guys are interested for sure. Okay, cool. So this is starting to get more dry. We have that going. Um, I'm going to put in little like who's that are going on here. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to keep using my thin brush. And so this little... So we're going to draw that. There's going to be on either side. they to be fairly close to where the head is. I'm going to bring them a little bit closer here. And I'm just going to make a loop like this. Like a little bump. Okay. And then I'm going to go and make kind of like another look, a smaller little bump because it kind of goes a little bit like that. And then we'll just connect it here. Okay, we can just color that in. Make it all brown. Okay, and then we'll do on the other side the same thing. Okay, so a loop on top, connect it, kind of curved below, and then we're going to put in those uh, other rest of it in a moment in black. And I find that it's lighter, so I'm just going to lighten it up a little bit with yellow. And just lighten it up slightly, my brown. And I'm just, sorry, I'm just using a bit of darker paint as well, just to give it a little bit of a shadow below too. So I have a bit of the shadow, the original brown, and I just lighten it up a little bit with the yellow in the middle, but then it mixed in with the brown. So it just kind of created a bit of a highlight. Okay. And I think I'm going to go right to putting in the rest of the, the hoops there. So like just with the black paint. And when I've done it, I've just put two little triangles on either side, so let's do that. So, It's a little dangerous. Okay. 
feel like I like fangs. <laughs> that a bit closer so you can see. Mm, it's a little bit shiny. There you go. So they look like kind of like weird fangs or bow ties. <laughs> Underneath there. But that's what we're going to go with for now. Let's see if I want to touch them up later. They kind of bother me right now. They seem a little bit funky but I think I need to like do some other stuff and then go back to it a bit later and decide if they are actually funky or if it's just my head. Oh, thanks, Deborah. I'm glad you love it. That's really great. I have not done a unicorn yet, Mary. I have not. And that's on my list because I feel like that would be quite popular. <laughs> I, and it'd be really fun to get all the color and the hair and stuff. I'm definitely down. I'll pull, I've pulled a few images that I really like of unicorns. So maybe it'll be something that will come up in future. Okay, so I'm debating whether I want to go in and start plotting out where I want the antlers to go into place, or if I want to start playing a bit with the face. I think this is still, mine is still quite, like, damp to the touch, and I feel like if I keep adding more, it's going to pull off some of the paint that's already there. So I'm going to move on and do the antlers first, and then I'm going to go back and do the actual face and everything um, there. So I'm going to use, I think, this brush. I think so. I'll like feel them for a bit and see if that's the one I want to go with. Okay, so with the antlers, <clears throat> um, in the image I took or I, I grabbed, it actually cut them off a bit, but I do want them to be fully on the canvas. I don't want them to go off the canvas personally. I want to keep them on. Um, so I, I'm going to have them stop and curve at the top. They won't go off of it. Um, and the way we're going to start with that is I'm going to use white paint <clears throat> to, again, plot them in and get my lines down, like where I want the white, the candy canes to live. And then I'll go in and put in um, the red and um, the red stripes, essentially the red and maybe some pink stripes, depending. Again, you can make them different color candy canes too, the traditional, the white and red, but there are many different flavors, many different colors, so you can make them whatever you so desire. So don't let our inspiration image limit you and your imagination if you have other ideas that you want to do. Okay, so I'm just wetting that brush a little bit because it's a little hard. I'm going to get some white paint on there. Okay, and like I always say, start thinner and build them thicker. Okay, so don't try not to just go like really fat right off the bat because it'll be harder to fix. Although again, in this situation, your painting's black anyway, so it's actually not so hard to fix this time. So if you want to go a little bit rogue, feel free. Okay, so I'm going to maybe start here and bring it down this way. Okay. I think I want to stop just before I, I hit the top there, and I'll use a different a thinner brush to do that better. Okay. I'm going to touch it up with the thinner brush after this because there's some lines I don't really like with this one right now. Okay. And we're going to do the same on the other side too. So it almost looks like a heart in the middle. It's very cute. Let's see if I can recreate that or if it's going to look funky. Yeah, it's going to look funky. That's okay. <laughs>
it. And we have one that comes out here. Okay, and this one comes up on this side. Hmm. <laughs> I'm just putting in where the candy cane antlers are going to live. And I wanted to go in a bit too much, so let's see, I'm going to bring this out like this. And I think I'm going to bring this one out a little bit lower. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to use my thinner brush just to fix up some of my lines because that just got good coverage to put in the majority of them there. <laughs> You're so funny, Bonnie. Bonnie says I am a unicorn. That's very sweet. <laughs> And Heather says, I'd love to unicorn, and so would my niece and sister-in-law. Okay, well, definitely, I'll definitely keep that up. Um, I think for most of December, I have the images lined up, and they're all, like, holiday, wintry kind of vibes going on. Um, and then for New Year's, we have, like, a New Year's-themed one. Um, so maybe in January, we'll probably look at doing some other ones. So I'll, I'll keep that in mind for a future one, for sure. All right. Get my thin brush out. Let's fix up some of these lines, shall we? Okay, so I'm just going to go over this a bit. It's funny because we're going to end up putting in different like red and stuff and everything in here. But I really want these, the first lines to look good, to be nice and straight. So I'm just going to bring it right down to the head of the reindeer. We always have candy canes left over from the year before. I just found some from last year. But I guess they don't really ever go bad. <laughs> just like a bunch of sugar. <laughs> My husband came back uh, also from Dollarama and picked up more candy canes. I think he got like another like two boxes. <laughs> I was like, we don't even, like we still have some from last year. <laughs> I don't think we need any more tend to be a, a treat that we grab on a regular you know even during the holidays I do love them going back to like hot drinks and like hot chocolates and stuff I love putting a candy cane inside a hot chocolate and letting the the mint take over and mix with chocolatey goodness 
Maybe that would be a good idea for one of those, like, hot chocolate bombs. You put, like, a shot of espresso on top and then put a candy cane in there. So it's like a mint mocha. Oh, my gosh. That's a great idea. I don't have any more of the hot chocolate bombs, so it's not going to happen <laughs> right now, but it's an idea. So, yeah. Now, where am I going to put my hand? Okay. Something else I loved with like mint without the sugar content is using like mint tea. When I worked at um, a well-known coffee chain with green aprons, um, that was like a go-to. We used to, one of the perks of working there was that you'd get uh, free beverages on your, on your shift, but you can only take so much um, of everything with the syrupy content. And so that was a go-to as well. I would do like a, I might still do like a hot chocolate or something, but I would put a tea bag, like a mint tea bag in it. Oh, it was so good. That's it. You guys can follow me for painting tips and uh, coffee, hot beverage tips. Any questions about coffee? I can probably answer it. <laughs> so I'm just making some of my, the white a bit more opaque because I can see the black coming through it and even though I know I'm still going to put in like more lines I it's just bothering me right now so I'm just touching it up a little bit before I put the details in cool. I think I got the ends yeah I just want for, for, really I wanted just to make sure all the ends were a bit like rounded and they just look a little bit nicer so okay cool not too shabby I'm just going to get some details going on this guy and put in the ornaments. But the ornaments won't be until later since we need to get the decorations on the, all the stripes on the candy canes. All right. Okay, cool. So I think at this point I'm going to go back to my, yeah, nice and dry, my reindeer guy. And I just want to do a little bit of touch up highlight and shadow on the actual um, his face so you'll notice here it's a little bit darker just around the top part here and then it's a little bit lighter as it comes out because it, it it's a three-dimensional so it kind of will give the effect of it right um, and then we're also going to put in the detailing of like the big you know we will do the detailing first Can we do that first Hmm. Yeah, you know what? Let's do that. Let's pop in his Rudolph's big old red nose. And then we will um, play with the, the colors on his face, I think. Okay. So let's see where we want that to live. So on the actual nose, it's actually like ha the top part hits about halfway point of the nose here. And it comes down almost to the bottom there. And it's kind of like, um, it's not like a full on circle. It's a little bit like a circle that's been squished a bit, like slightly oval. So let's put that in and start small. And we'll just grow it out.
So I'm using my fine brush just to try to have good lines on here and grow it outwards. And yeah, there we go. I think I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm just doing it fully red and then I'll add that you know, bright spot on it a little bit afterwards. I don't know if I want to make it a little bigger. No, I think I'm good with it like that. Second guess myself. All right. Okay, so now that I know where the nose lives, I'm going to add a little bit of the, the shadow. Okay, so I'm just going to get a bit of darker brown. I'm just going to put a little bit of the darker brown on this curve here. And at the bottom here, I'm just going to put a little shadow there and there. And then I want it to be a little bit lighter here. So I'm putting yellow just to lighten it up. And it got a little bit too light, so I'm just going to add a little bit more brown into it. Mix it in a little bit there. Okay, I'm just a little bit more yellow here. Just a light highlight, but it won't be as bright. So I'm just going to tone that down. Okay. Okay, so I added it darker up here. I put a bit of yellow in here just to give it a bit of a highlight and I'm painting it's like a wet on wet so it's all wet and I'm just blending it as such yeah. and I put a little bit of a highlight under here and I also put a bit of a shadow under here too so the shadows there and there's a little highlight there okay Yes, and see that. And I'm still not done with the nose. We're still going to put more detail on there. Oh, it's so shiny. There we go. So that's what we got. That's what we got going on. Cool EO. Okay. So I want it. So now the top part of the face has to match. It's like he used like weird like concealer and foundation. And now he has different colors that don't match. Not a good look. So I'm just getting my brown going. Okay, I'm just going to lighten it up a little bit. I want it to be a little bit lighter in the middle here. I'm still going to put the eyes in and all that, but there we go. Just for the base, we got that going on. I definitely touched up here where I didn't want to, so I'm just going to fix my line up a little bit. Get too into the blending and then I touch other areas. <laughs> it's inevitable. Okay. I can still see some of my white sticking out, so I'm probably going to go back with like a fine brush and like touch that up so I can't see that, but I won't, um, won't stress out too much about that right now. 
Okay. It's looking pretty darn cute so far, guys. Hope you're all enjoying it. Hope it's turning out nicely. I'm gonna put a little bit of white in here. I feel like it's a little too dark. Sorry, I'm going a little rogue. I'm just, uh, I feel like these ears aren't doing enough justice. So I put some white and then I put some brown and I put some yellow back in just to, I don't know, play with it, I guess. I don't know, it still looks a little bit off, but I'm not very happy with that. It's probably still going to touch it again, to be honest. Okay. Um, where do we want to go next? You know what? I wasn't going to do some touch-ups, but I am because these, seeing the white is bothering me, so I'm just going to, with my fine brush, just touch up my lines a little bit. Now that I have the blending the way I want it, strange. There we go. There we go. That's better. There you go, it's a little better. The brown's not blending in the way I want it to. I'm just going to try to do that a little bit before I clean this brush off. Cuts a little better. Cool. Yeah, I need those to be lighter. That's, that's the issue there. Okay, cool. Doesn't look bad though. Alright. Alrighty. So what else do we need to do here? Well, we need to finish off this nose here. So we want to give it a nice shine. So there's going to be a white spot like that right there. And this one, there's a bit of a, a rim of like pink as well. I think I'm just going to leave it as such right now. Um, but I am going to outline the nose in black. And then I'm also going to do this, uh, the mouth. the smile there we go and the lines there and there so cute so 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 cute okay so we need to put in his beautiful little eyes Hmm. How shall we approach this? Okay. I think the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use black and do the outline of where I want the eyes to be. And then I'm going to fill in the black part, let it dry, and then I'll touch in the other parts. I think that's how I'm going to approach it. Okay. So the eyes are very cartoony oval. 
So we're gonna have one here. Okay, and he's looking off to the corner here, so this has to kind of come in an angle, and we're going to fill all of this in black. in. Cute. Cute, cute, cute. to cover that line up with some brown, I think. Okay. So we're still going to finish up the eyes and put some color and whatnot. Right now, I'm going to leave it. Um, but I do want to do the eyebrow. So I'm just putting a little bit of a little bit of black to darken up my brown a little bit more. And the little eyebrows just come to the sides. good. Got a little thick down there. That's okay. This color's not blending the way I want it to. Looks like it's a bit of a black eye now. <laughs> For now, and then we'll go back in and put in the color and the wet dot to finish up his eye in a little bit. So now let's go back to the candy cane antlers, and we're going to start doing that. So really, if we look at the stripes of the candy cane, they all go in like an angle direction. Some are a little bit thicker than others, so you don't have to worry. They're all similar in size, but they're not exactly the same size. You'll notice as well on this one, it looks as though they painted the candy canes in red 
and then while it was still oh, kind of wet they went on top of it with the white and that's how you got the pink so again you can play around with that if you want to make your own pink if you want to go over this in red and then go back and put white you can do that if you want I'm gonna just go straight in and put some red lines and then play with it as I go so I'm just gonna put in And this is going to be the time consuming part. And this one then comes out here. Start doing this one. There we go. Like little curvy curves. And again, if you end up getting paint on the black, you can always go back in and be detailed and like clean it up afterwards. That's the nice thing again about it, having a nice solid background. I definitely find a way off the line sometimes, so I'm probably going to go back and touch up. Okay. 
it. So again, apologies for not talking too much, but this is just pretty much putting in all the stripes on the candy cans. So that side looks decent. I think I'm going to start with this guy here though because so what I'm trying to do is I'm trying just to make sure it goes across the white line and if it goes into the black then so be it and then I'll just touch it up with black paint afterwards but I want to make sure it is crossing the entire white area over. So it looks like the lines continue to be straight beat all the way across. So, yeah, you can also do some of them like thinner and some of them a little bit thicker as well. It's up to you how you want your candy cane pattern to be. So cute! All right, so I'll show you my lines. You'll see that they come off. Oh, I don't know. Actually, you might not be able to see it too much in the camera, but I promise you that a lot of the red is in the black area. So it's not preferred. 
So I am going to go back over and like touch it with black, touch it over black paint. But for now, I'm pretty happy with that. And I'm just debating whether I want to do some like kind of pink lines. I'm not sure if I do yet. I'm going to mix the pink and then decide. So I'm just putting some red into my white paint. Let's see if I want to go back and just like add a little. I do kind of like that. Maybe a little annoying. So I'm going to add a little bit more. With this, I just want to give like the feeling of pink, so I'm not so concerned about it fully going across or anything. I think that's nicer. That looks really cute, actually. I think this music just getting a little bit faster just kind of sped me up. I was like, ooh. Definitely messier, but I think that looks nicer with the pink. So Susan says she was interested in picture one this week and really wished to learn how to make the background with colored lights. And would I be able to quickly explain it to you? Um, I can. Let me see if I can pull up the image on my phone just so I can show other people what we're talking about. Um, -dum -dum -dum. Okay, so Susan's referring to this image here. So this is um, number the, for the choice that we had, number one, that uh, was actually second, was the runner up to this week's picture choice. It's talking about how to make these colorful dots in the background. So again, we would have a black background um, and then I would use, um, cause they're very like, they're very like blurry in the background. The way I would go about doing it is, um, I would water down my paint quite a bit. Um, so I'd have a very watered down like orange. Um, and then it almost be like watercolor. And then I would do, um, a very, um, see through essentially. Um, of that circle, whatever color I start with. And then I would then put more of the paint along the exterior and just kind of slowly bring it in, but keep the middle very watered down, like just very, very light. So I don't know if that helps a bit, 
Um, so that's how I would approach it. And then with some of them are a little bit more opaque than others. Some of them are lighter than others. So I would just, I would alternate that. So some of them I would make them almost just keep kind of the water kind of like very thinned out paint. And then with other ones, I would make them a little bit darker and some I would make it like the out exterior would have like, it would be more of a like actual paint paint and the inside would be watered down. Um, and then you just vary them up and vary the sizes and vary the colors and that's how I would approach that. So hopefully that helped a little bit. It's, tr it's tricky without actually like doing it, uh, but I, um, I won't be able to get fully into that today, unfortunately. But hopefully that helps. I'm just gonna go back around just to clean up my lines. I'm just going with the black paint. Kind of almost like outline or re-outline. I didn't really outline it before. Let's outline the antlers nicely. The nice thing about it being a black background is that when you do an outline, you just have to kind of worry about the neatness of the one side of the line, but the other side you don't have to worry too much about because it just blends in so nicely to the background. It's very quick and easy to do. You still want the paint to be, um, you need to put a little bit of water in it just so that it's very smooth. We still want that line to look nice where the candy cane antlers live. Yeah, let me know how it turns out, Susan. If you end up doing it, I'd like to see it. I think that'd be a fun background regardless, like to, to play with. that side's good. I went a little bit crazier on this side. <laughs> okay, let's just clean up some of these lines. Ooh, that was really messy. I don't like that at all.
Okay. Got to go back to that reindeer face and finish off his eyes. His eyes are bugging me now. But yeah, these messy lines are really bothering me. <laughs> now I don't know to put my hand without squishing up the paint. Okay. Trying to keep my canvas always kind of easy for you to see, but then it uh, normally I would just turn it upside down or have it on a table or something. I might have to do that though, because uh, yeah, sorry. I'm going to have to put this upside down for a moment or two just so I can get the, fix up the outline. Okay, I think that is good. That fixed up my rogue lines that are going everywhere. Awesome. Okay, cool. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the eyes because I want to finish them up. I need to get some more white. All right, so let's get the white going. Okay, so I'm going to just fill in this area here, and I'm probably going to have to go back with the black and touch it up again afterwards, but that's okay. I just want to get this white part in here. Okay, I'm going to put a little white dot. That's going to make him look real. It's crazy. I love when you put that little white dot. It just makes everything just pop so nicely. Notice my nose is actually a little bit more pink than I wanted it to be. I'm just going to put it in the white on top of it. There you go. That's better. Okay. Cute. Super cute. And I feel like his dot needs to be bigger. Nah. I'm just going to leave it for now. Okay. He does actually have like <clears throat> blue eyes in the picture here. Um, so let's do that. Let's put. A little bit of blue in my white to make a nice light, pretty blue. Okay. And then I'm just going to a slight extra line there with the lighter blue. Okay, same thing on this side. I made it very light. Um, you guys probably can't really see the difference in the color. But there's a slight difference in color. <laughs> it's very, very slight. This is kind of almost more of like a turquoise. If you have a turquoise, you can use that. I'm fine with it just being just slightly different like this. So I like that look. Okay, cool. Okay, so I'm happy with him so far. Again, I think this needs to be a little bit like brighter, but I'm not going to worry about that right yet. Let's work on our ornaments. <clears throat> so... The ornaments, so there's four nice ornaments. Um, I think I'm going to still stick with like a ball 
kind of shape. Um, but I definitely want to make them different colors. Um, so I want to do maybe like, I kind of want like a light purple and like a, like a blue and maybe like a yellow and a green or something. I don't know. I'm not sure. I kind of want like different colors. I don't, I don't know. I don't know which way I'm going to be going. They might all be different colors and then we might put different designs on them. I am not sure yet. Um, regardless though, let's place where we want them. Um, now again, you can start with white, um, do a base of white, let it dry and then put whatever color you want on top of it. Or you can go right in and put whatever color you want to use. Um, this time I'm going to just put in the color I want to use and see how that goes. We'll see if that was, that will work or not. So I'm going to go with my blue. Okay. And again, I'm going to make one right here. I'm going to start smaller than what I would want. So I'm just going to go like this. And just bring it out. And again, if you want to use like a stencil, you're more than welcome to. Uh, just to give you like the circle is what I mean. And if you want to use, um, what are they called? The protractors. Oh, you know what would be cute? <clears throat> we could, if you, you could do like the four balls and we could put like 2020 on it. So it could be like a 2020 Christmas picture. That'd be kind of cute. That would look nice. Or we could write something like hope, like H-O-P-E or love. That'd be kind of neat. Ooh. I'm digging this now. I'm thinking I want to maybe make them more similar. Hmm. Hmm. Now I got some ideas swirling. They're swirling. More, more red. I think I want to make this a little bit lighter. I'm just going to put white in here. Make this blue a little bit lighter. Yeah, I think I'm going to make them more, like, a little bit lighter. Maybe I'm still going to use purple, though, I think. I think I'm going to use purple, like, my blue and purple. Hmm. Maybe just blue. Ah! Too many choices. Too many choices. What do you guys think? Do you guys think we should <clears throat> put some words <clears throat> in the ornament, like letters? spell something out. I think that'd be kind of cute. Okay. And um, this ornament's going to live on, I might actually make it hang on that branch. It's going to look weird. No, that's going to look weird. It has to hang a bit lower if it's going to have words in it. I'm going to put it here, I think here. And that one's going to be there. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to put this one here. I'm going to go right over my candy cane antler. I'm using purple for this one. I'm going to try to make them a similar size, but <clears throat> Handing it, so I, I don't know. We'll see. Well, hopefully, I'm just trying to make them all circles. <laughs> so, 
but this is definitely going to need a little bit more because I can still see the antler behind it. I'm just putting a little bit of white on top because I want it just to pastel up the my ornaments. Ooh, if you even had like glitter, that would be kind of cool too. They look really pretty. Glitter the ornaments. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna do another purple one on that side. I'm gonna put it here. It's gonna be a little bit. Adding white again to this one just to lighten him this one up again. Okay, cool. And then I'm gonna go and do a blue another blue one there. Okay. And I want this one to hang a little bit lower, like here. And again, put some white and just lighten this up a little bit. I like them. They look cute. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So before we do anything else with the ornaments, we need to put in the little top part of the ornament. So that's going to be a, a gray. I'm going to use my fine brush to do that. So I'm just going to put a little bit of black into my white just to make a silvery, really it's just a gray color, <laughs> but I'm going to try to get it like lighter. It's not super, super dark. And the way we're going to do this is just on the top of the ornament, we're just going to put like a little like square and then it just kind of curves on the top of the ornament. Like so, okay. And then you can even have a little, you can even curve a little bit on the top there too. It's almost like you're giving your ornament a little hat. And then I'm just going to go with black paint and just put like little lines in that. Or maybe just a darker, no, I think I'm going to go with black. Yeah. 
Okay. And I'm just going to put like little, like little lines. Okay. Okay. Now I gotta hang these ornaments. So here it has basically like a black kind of wire. I don't know if I'm gonna use black because you can't really see it very well, and, and I know we're not really supposed to in a way. Um, but I think I want to do maybe like a darker gray. So I'm just gonna add more black to that silver I made. So I still want that to be visible. Okay, so we're gonna hang the ornaments. Okay, so with this one here, this one just goes kind of right, yeah, it kind of comes right here. So it's gonna basically bring the string up and then you're gonna see the string poke up a little bit over the um, candy cane because it actually it, it's not going to stop where the candy cane uh, part stops it's going to stop just a bit above because it loops over right just keep that in mind when you do these parts okay and so for this one hmm I did something interesting there I'm going to hang it on that top guy here I'm pretty sure so I'm going to bring oh okay I'm just going to have to do this because I need to see where that's going to so, well, you know what? I might just stop it right there because I don't think I want it to go any further because I'm worried it's going to look weird. But it goes there. That's where that one's going to stop. Okay. This one I think is going to go on the top. So I'm going to bring that around and then up here. Okay, and this one, I think we'll just go on this bottom one here too. No, it doesn't really hang at the top. I don't know. I'm going to bring it all the way up, I think. I think that looks nicer. Now I kind of want to bring that one a bit higher, but it looks like they're all kind of hanging in different spots, so I don't really mind that. I think. I don't know if that's bothering me yet. It might bother me a little bit later. For now, I'm going to leave it as such. Okay. Okay. So now I want to say, okay, what do I want to do with these ornaments? Do I want to add anything extra to them, or just want to leave them as the way they are, and then maybe put some letters in them? I feel like there's still a little bit I can still see through them a bit, so I think I still want to put another coat, or at least on some part of it. <clears throat> and then I also want to put a little bit of a shine on it. I think making them sparkly would be really cool. I just don't have any sparkle paraphernalia to add. But if you do, go for it. That'd look really cool. Alright, so I'm just gonna make this a little bit darker. Sorry, not darker, just more opaque. That's what I meant to say. Still a little bit to see through. Okay, let's do that other guy here. And since I don't think I'm going to put any additional decorations on these, like I said, I might put like a word like love or hope or something, other four-letter word, maybe. 
<laughs> Gonna be nod, you could put a bad word. Yeah, a cutesy picture with like a naughty word in it. That'd be kind of funny, actually. I can't do that because I have a child. <laughs> that would not be appropriate. It's still funny to think about. Okay, I'm just gonna make this a little bit more opaque. And as I'm doing that, you might notice that I'm just making it a little bit darker around the bottom, and then I am just putting like a little bit of a lighter spot, you know, like the top middle-ish, just to kind of make it look like it's more of a sphere. But it's not really necessary to do that. I just I think it'll look kind of nicer that way. Especially since I'm not going to put any other lines or anything on it. I'm going to put some letters, I think, with it. Like I said. A little bit more white, just a touch. No, that's not enough. So I think I'm going to put all the snowflakes in and then um, I'll think about what I want to put in there and then we'll decide how we want to, how else, what else we want to do. If there's anything else you want to touch up or if you're happy with it or what we're going to do. So we're at the two hour mark now. It's 8.03. So I'm just going to start putting in all of my, my falling snow. So I'm just getting white paint and my thin brush. And I'm just putting in little dots of snow in the black spot areas that you can see. You can make some a little bit bigger and some a little smaller. And I've noticed there's a few little spots that I ended up, I guess, like, as I was going through my painting, some other paint color kind of splattered sometimes, I guess, on the black. So I'm going to use this opportunity and cover those little spots up with <laughs> my falling snow. I was going to make some like more noticeable snowflakes, but I think I'll leave that for now. Okay, and then I want to put in, like I said, some kind of like word. I like the word love. Love. Or hope. Mm. Dare. <laughs> what other four word, letter words that are polite do you think we should maybe put in? Put my name. <laughs> Lisa. <laughs> and I think I don't know if I'm going to use white or if I'm going to use black. I think I'm going to use black and then I might. Where's my black paint? There it is. And then I might just use a little bit of white to give it a bit of a highlight necessary. I think I'm going to go with 
love, I think. Yeah, let's do that. Um, <laughs> kind of want to use handwriting, but then I'm worried it's going to look weird. I'm just going to print it, I think. cute yeah I think I'm good with that super cute I'm gonna get white and just put a little shine on some of these ornaments like that okay and I'm also going to just put a little Highlight on the cords that are hanging. Okay, and I still don't like those too much, so I'm going to see if I can fix them up now before I conclude for today. Burn, touch up the bum on here, and I think I need to call it quits before these ears make me go crazy. Yeah, I think that's better than being lighter like that. That looks a little bit nicer, I think. Still staple that a bit. There you go. Okay. Well, I think we're done with this guy. I'm going to put my initials on here. There we go. Oh, better wash that off better. Just make sure with your thin ones that you wash them off well. And I like to always like wash them off and then kind of reform the point 
So when it dries, it dries nice and thin again. All right, so there we go. So there is my version of Candy Cane Reindeer. So I hope you have all enjoyed this. Um, I can't wait to see what you've done with yours and if you've changed it in any way or if you put <clears throat> a different word or if you <clears throat> kept it more with the original or if you changed the background or however you took your own spin on it. I am really excited to see what you've done. So please snap a picture of it and um, share it in the comments. Um, I'm going to be um, posting this. So when I put up the post, if you want to share in that, you can put it wherever you want, really, because I usually get notifications saying it's there. Um, but usually people post them either in this event um, or they'll post it on the um, when I post my picture and people post it on right there. Um, so either way is great. Um, if you've liked this, uh, feel free to share this with other people who you think might enjoy this. Again, we do this every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, and um, I, every Saturday there are three options that I will uh, put out and then you guys can decide on which one you like the best um, and vote on it. And then the one with the most votes uh, by the Tuesday following at noon, we announce as the winner and that's the one that we paint together on the Wednesday. Um, and like I said, all the images, if you have any images that you really like, feel free to send them to me. Um, it might, might be something we do in the future as one of the, the voting options. Um, and, um, and like I said, it can be from photos, it can be from um, other paintings, um, and we just take inspirations from anything that you see online, um, and then we'll try to create our own version of it, and I'll walk you through step by step how I would approach it. Um, and that's about it for today, I think. So yeah. So if you like this, I'm really happy. Thanks so much for joining me. Um, fantastic. I'm really glad that you guys liked it and uh, have a great day. Bye everyone. See you later.